In this video, we will learn about the checklist method for assessing the impacts. As we know, that environmental impact assessment consists of three steps, impact identification, impact prediction, and impact analysis evaluation or assessment for determine whether the impacts are significant. And for carrying out a complete study of EIA for a proposed site, it is necessary to adopt appropriate EIA methodologies available like uh, ad hoc method, checklist method, matrix method, network method, overlay method, factor analysis, cost benefit analysis, and simulation model, and so on. In our earlier video, we discussed about the ad hoc method, and in this video, we are discussing about the checklist method. So checklist method are the standard list of environmental parameters to be investigated for possible potential impact associated with the particular project uh, to ensure that there is no potential impact is overlooked. So the evaluator can need to just tick mark against each environmental parameters uh, for uh, uh, adverse or beneficial or no impact due to the proposed activity and so it is a qualitative method and the method is frequently used for screening and scoping stage of EIA and this is the formalized version of ad hoc approach. So checklist method are uh, uh, of four categories, simple, descriptive, scaling and weighting. And the simple uh, checklist method uh, merely represent a list of environmental factors in one, two, three, uh, like this and address the nature of impacts either in yes or no or negative, positive or nil impact or adverse, significant or neutral in opinion. So broadly environmental factors might be uh, uh, affected by the proposed project generally be uh, air environment, noise, water, soil environment, biodiversity, uh, corporate environment responsibility, green belt development, socio-economic uh, studies uh, waste management like that however no information or guidelines are provided on specific data needs method for measurement or impact prediction or assessment so it can give an idea uh, about the type of impacts like short term long term reversible uh, irreversible etc so this is an example of checklist method with respect to thermal power plant during operational stage. Here you can see that transportation of coal is a negative impact and uh, discharge of water is negative impact. Ash management, air pollution is always, uh, everything is negative impact. But in case of green belt development, extending hospitals to the um, nearby villagers or faraway settlements, uh, these are, are providing nutrients, food to the nearby schools is the positive impact. Now this is an, another example of potential impact of a road project. Here you can see uh, that the two uh, likely impacts uh, column is there, one adverse and beneficial and then short term, long term, reversible, irreversible, local or wide under adverse and uh, short term, long term, significant and normal is under the beneficial column. And you can see in case of fisheries, this uh, impact is adverse, long term adverse impact, irreversible and local. If the part of the fisheries is get uh, filled up due to the project, so it is a long term impact and irreversible, and, but however it is a local impact. And in case of you can see that the agriculture, so it can see that that is a uh, uh, short term, it is a short term and normal impact is there, socio-economic is long term and normal positive uh, beneficial impacts is noted. And this is an, another example of township projects, uh, the, the mainly social environment, living environment, water environment or water uh, air quality is further classified into uh, different impact factor in case of air quality in case uh, you can see that the uh, uh, this the particulate matter or uh, dust particulate matter is during the construction phase is is uh, obvious effect because solid star is obvious effect and 
and during the operational stage it is a uh, slight effect but in case of gaseous oxides gaseous pollutant you can see that the during the constructional phase it is a slight effect but the operational phase it is uh, usual effects so the second uh, type of checklist method is a uh, descriptive technique method and it is an ex uh, extension of the simple checklist identified parameters can further classified into subclasses such as uh, present status area or number of people affected uh, effects on population and beside identification the environmental parameters descriptive checklist contains guidelines on how to measure data on particular parameters impact prediction and assessment descriptive checklists are excellent for describing comprehensive list of impacts and are widely used in environmental impact studies so this is an example of descriptive uh, checklist you can see the air quality water quality and noise quality is further uh, subclass into the present condition of uh, in case of air so uh, particulate matter pm10 2.5 socks nox you can be uh, measured for the uh, for present condition identification through baseline data collection area to be affected number of people to be affected this this uh, has to be collected so this description are required and that the previous ex example we have seen in case of um, thermal power plant and at at operating operation stage here you can see that impacts against the parameter is written in in terms of health impact actually so transportation coal, uh, of coal can cause respiratory and skin disease whereas solid waste ash management also uh, in case of you can see for yes uh, uh, discharge of wastewater is the pollution of water bodies and soil may lead to air waterborne disease ash management fly ash may cause uh, pollution of air and water uh, so these are the uh, adverse impact in in uh, of on on health on the other hand maintenance of uh, green belt development extending hospitals providing nutrients food this is the uh, uh, is uh, good impact because the beneficial impact because the health of the employees would increase and uh, this is the positive impact of these projects so this is the uh, descriptive checklist now the scaling checklist this checklist is similar to the descriptive but with a supplementary information on scaling of the parameter scaling is assigned to each element according to its important like one can give one for the low impact four for the high impact and experts are needed for scaling these various environmental factors so if you uh, see this the previous uh, example of the thermal power plant you can see that this column is incorporated here against the scaling the negative is the sign uh, denotes the neg uh, negative impact and plus sign shows the positive impact as you've seen in in the, in the uh, based on our uh, simple checklist method but here the value is given uh, so one is assigned for low impact three is assigned for high impact or four is very high impact so accordingly uh, scaling is given here and the weighting checklist is the last uh, uh, method of under checklist and this checklist is similar to the scaling but with a supplementary information on subjective evaluation weightage of parameters weight is given as per importance and weightage may be given individually parameter wise or collectively in in a scale of 0 to 1 or 1 uh, 0 to 100 we will discuss this point later in the alternatives uh, weightage uh, uh, discussion during the alternative weightage type the weightage can be assigned by putting uh, a short term or long term life quiz you can uh, just this qualitative assessment can do by not giving the this uh, numerical value we can give short term or long term also expert are needed in case of the weighting also uh, weighting of various environmental factors so this method is strong in impact identification more impactful factors can easily be 
identified by seeing the weightage so it is very attractive for the decision makers this checklist provides a certain degree of interpretation and evaluation as weightage may vary from uh, expert to expert so it is a provides a certain degree of interpretation so it is not a definite because the scaling value is depend is vary from expert to expert so again this uh, a thermal power plant uh, table is there so here we use uh, L or S for long term impact and to, or to show the short term impact the rest of the things are as usual so here you can see and in case of uh, in this slide we will discuss about the weighting uh, given individually or collectively so suppose a coal project uh, or is a project of a coal mining and weightage is given of each environmental parameters assigned by expert collectively here uh, out of 100 so total uh, weightage is 100 and the five parameters are identified and each parameter was assigned accordingly so this is a collective number collectively given 100 so if there is two alternative the expert will distribute this parameter wise weightage between alternative one and alternative two within the weightage assigned earlier so in case a uh, yard of quality total weightage is given 40 so alternative one and two you have to uh, give these uh, uh, either 30 or 10 and but the total sum of this alternative will be the 40 so in case of fast alternative cng is used and other is diesel used used so the reason is the better fuel is used so i give alternative one is a good number so accordingly decision makers can easily identify the which value is greater and which is less based on this we can identify the alternatives so but there are certain limitations if this weighting checklist because it poses danger of importing equal importance to every impacts when one value uh, that is 40 is assigned in air quality it cannot distinguish that uh, suspended particulate matter is 40 or socks nox everything each is given 40 weightage so this is practically is not uh, happen so numerical values assigned to impacts can be derived based on subjective understanding that's why there is expert to expert this value is uh, varies so make more provision for assessing dynamic uh, make no uh, provision on assessing dy dynamic probabilistic trends or mitigation or enhancement or monitoring so once weightage is assigned then the value is almost fixed that there is no variation or changes so there are some pros and cons of the of this checklist method easy to understand good for site selection and priority setting and simple ranking and weighting and the concert it is inherently too simple to distinguish uh, between direct and indirect or secondary impacts with this method it cannot be said whether the air pollutant can cause ozone or smoke formation so thus this cannot help to identify all the significant impacts so it does not uh, show the cause effect linking uh, between action and impact so and sometimes it is uh, uh, cumbersome because the list may be exhaustive if you want to take all impacts so the list is very big so the process of incorporating value is uh, controversial because uh, from some, uh, expert to expert it may vary so some expert can uh, challenge it one waiting given so so this is the cons so for further study you can read these references written here so thank you thank you for watching this video